Welcome everybody and thank you this evening for coming to our meeting of the Board of Health for the month of May. If everybody would please rise and stand for our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll begin our meeting uh, with our annual monthly health update for the town. As of the latest Thursday, April 28th, Massachusetts Department of Public Health update, the town of Winchington currently registers with a COVID-19 testing positivity average of 3.54%, up one half of 1% since last week's previous report. In the past four weeks, Winchington has slowly increased from a very low 1.23% on April 7th to 2.74% on April 14th to 3.01% on April 21st to the current level of 3.54% as of last Thursday, April 28th. Again, the Mass DPH comes out with the numbers every Thursday. The two largest population centers closest to Winchenden being the city of Gardner and town of Athol, both tested slightly up but are still currently low. Gardner with 21,000 residents has increased from 3.19 to 3.34%. And Athol with 11,500 residents has increased from 2.02 to 3.07%. Other local municipalities increasing were Ashburnham moving from 3.99 to 4.67%. Ashby moving from 7.04 to 7.626%. Templeton moving up from 4.02 to 4.57%. Decreasing slightly in our region were Phillipston with a large decline dropping from 4.17 to 1.39%. Royalston dropping from 3.85 to 2.82. And Hubbardston also two towns away going down from 4.39 to 3.57%. While the Commonwealth of Massachusetts 14-day testing positivity average increased from 3.72 to 4.39%, our 10-town area surrounding Winchington, which includes Winchington, reduced slightly from 4.00 to 3.88% positivity testing. The nearby North Quabbin region continues to see regional clusters with high numbers, as Warwick, just several towns to Winchington's west, registers at a very high 8.33%. Nearby to Warwick, but south of it, Irving yields 6.90% along the Route 2 corridor. Petersham, just north of the Quabbin Reservoir, is also testing at 8.06%. In Northfield, just north of the Route 2 corridor, is 6.67%. So as you go down, just not far from here on Route 2 west, right along the Connecticut River, just north of the Quabbin watershed. Their numbers are extremely high right now on average versus the rest of the Commonwealth. To the east, Fitchburg and Limitster, with a combined population of nearly 90,000 people, are thankfully testing at a very low 3.17 and 3.70 positivity, respectively. Overall, Massachusetts, of its 6.9 million residents fully vaccinated, we now realize over 3,550,000. With the newest report last week showing 7,000 7, Bay State residents becoming fully vaccinated in just those last seven consecutive days last week. Massachusetts now registers 89% of its residents with at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine versus 77% nationwide and 56% of its residents with at least one booster shot versus 46% of residents nationwide. Town of Winston and Board of Health continues to recommend becoming vaccinated only if healthy enough to do so, especially if you have pre-existing conditions or are immunocompromised. So that's that. <coughs> okay, meeting minutes. Jim, we didn't get anything from Deb, did we? Uh, we did not. We had an email come in uh, just before coming up here. It said uh, she is stuck at work and, and uh, unable to get them to us tonight, but we'll, she'll have them for our review uh, later on. Okay, for the next meeting? For the next meeting, yes. Okay, and we also did not get a bill then 
for the no, March she said minutes. The invoices are, are also going to be coming. So that invoice would then obviously be for March and April, then, if subject to approval? Correct. Okay. Because Tina was just asking about the invoice also. Yep. Okay. Um, we were going to introduce candidate Glenn Rochelle, who, as we all know as board members, is the only person on the ballot at the uh, Senior Center tonight in our town polling place, but Glenn is not here yet. He may show up. So um, if Glenn happens to show up during the meeting to be introduced, we'll give him a chance to say hi and introduce himself if he chooses to do so, but Glenn is not here at this time. Again, Glenn La Rochelle is the only candidate on the ballot. Um, there will be, as usual, other write-in candidates. There usually are, but general practice, if you're the only one on the ballot, the odds are usually looking pretty good that you have a shot at uh, success. Far be it for me to make that venture of a guess. So with that, I guess we'll hand it over to Tina for food permits. And I sent a message asking if they were, he was coming. So put that aside, sorry. Not so. Um, just a quick reminder. So we have a few food service permits and then uh, a few temporary food permits. So at the board's request, would you like to approve all of them at once or do you want me to go one by one? How would we like to do it tonight? Uh, why don't we go one by them. one and then we can just pass them and sign them as we go down, Tina. Okay. Because we usually do them all together when we've got like a million of them. But yeah, why don't we just uh, go one by one and we'll sign them together. Okay. Turn we'll pass them down the table. All right. So the first one was the Winchiton, uh, excuse me, the American Legion. This was permit 2210. This was discussed at previous meetings, but we had to table it. Um, we now have a quorum and able to um, approve the food permit. Um, so I would like to just explain. There is a $100 fee, fee paid and uh, there was no notes or violations. What's the permit number? I understand, okay. yes, two, it two, needs one, to zero. abstain. Thank you. Two two one zero for the American Legion. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any questions regarding this food permit? No. no. Anybody like to make a motion? I make a motion to approve. Second. Motion is made to pay American Legion food permit two two one zero and seconded by Member Tina Santos. Any other discussion? Hearing none. Vote to approve food permit two two one zero. Lionel Cloutier. Aye. Ed Bond. Abstain. Tina Santos. Aye. And the chair votes aye. And just for public record, Ed Bond abstained as he is a member of the Legion. Three yes, one abstain. And just for the record, I am a member of the Women's Auxiliary. However, I've, I've called and there is no uh, yep. conflict in regards to me. Thank you for calling that in. Absolutely. Would you like me to continue? Oh, yes. Okay, next food permit uh, for a food service permit, 2220. This is for gourmet donuts. And there was a note that the cover needs to be repaired over the ice maker, and they paid the $100 food service fee. Excuse me. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Note was made on the repair. Motion was made by Lionel Cludy or member to, seconded by member Aid Bond. Ed Bond. Any discussion? Hearing none. Motion made and seconded. Go forward with a vote on approval. Member Lionel Cludy. Aye. Ed Bond. Aye. Tina Santos. Aye. And chair votes aye. Motion passes 4-0. Next is a 
Food Service Permit 2221 for the Winchenden Senior Center. And it is a town entity, so there is no fee. There is also no notes or violations. I'll make a motion to approve permit number 22221 for the Winchenden Senior Center. And I'll second. No notes or violations on Winchington Senior Center per the health agent's visit. Again, no notes or violation. Fee waived as it is a nonprofit, not for profit. Made by motion made by member Ed Bond, seconded by member Lionel Cloutier. Any discussion? Hearing none, vote to approve. Lionel Cloutier. Aye. Member Ed Bond. Aye. Member Tina Santos. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion passes 4 0. Next are temporary food permits. This one is for permit number 2222. There was a temporary food permit fee of $25 paid. This is for dog father vending. And um, <laughs> they are going to be a food truck at our summer solstice. Where did they get a name like that? <laughs> it's pretty interesting. <laughs> like the godfather, but dog father. Is it run by Guido Dog Leon? <laughs> I make a motion to approve the temporary <laughs> permit. I'll second it. <laughs> How'd that inspection go, Jim? <laughs> That's one that'll be at the food truck festival, so we'll be inspecting all it of those. It didn't go to the once. dogs, right? <laughs> <laughs> Motion was made by member Ed Bond and seconded by member Lionel Cloutier. <laughs> Any questions? Hearing none, Lionel Cloutier. Aye. Ed Bond. Aye. Tina Santos. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion passes 4 0. Here's another one Easy Street. Never heard of it. <laughs> Never found it. No. I'd like to. Yeah, me too. So Sharon had said that he wasn't sure if he had to wait or not from the election, so she's going to send him down. No, he still could have came and introduced himself. He was more than welcome. I think they, he might have thought that we were going to kind of introduce him as a, a candidate, but he wasn't sure whether or not it was finalized, so, but absolutely. Okay, up next, Easy Street Tacos. I was going to ask if I had the box to sign it. <laughs> All right, so next one is food service permit, temporary <coughs> food truck service, permit 2223. There was a fee for $25 that was paid, and this is going to also be a food truck that will be at our summer solstice. I'll make a motion to approve permit number 2223 for Easy Street Tacos. East. Uh, easy Street, yes, I'm sorry. I'll second. For some reason I said, thought it was East, sorry. No notes that. or anything, Tina, all clean? Um, this is a food service um, food truck, so it will be inspected when um, on the date. Oh, so this is subject to inspection. Yeah, the... Uh, I just want to make sure we word it correctly. That's yeah, all. these type of things are usually inspected by the towns that they mm -hmm. operate in. So their base of operations does the inspections there, and then when they come here, uh, the morning of the event, they'll get inspected by us. Okay. So should we word them as subject to inspection day of the event then? Uh, no, no, because they have been inspected by their... Okay. Yeah, they have I just want to make sure I'm not wording it yeah. or miswording it incorrectly, that's all. Yeah. Make sure we're legally covered. You're fine. We normally yeah. just label them temp. Yeah. For temporary for that day, and then he inspects them anyways. I just want to make sure liability-wise. Yeah. yeah. It'd be our luck the one day we word it wrong, something <laughs> happens, and then it comes back on us. We don't need that. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> okay, you might. You, you made the motion, Ed? Yeah. Lionel seconded. And uh, Lionel seconded. Motion was made by Member Lionel Cloutier, seconded by Member... I'm sorry, made by Ed Bond, seconded by Member Lionel Cloutier for Easy Street Tacos. No questions. 
Hearing none, vote. Lionel? Aye. Ed Bon? Aye. Tia Santos? Aye. Chair votes aye. 4 0 yes. Next is also a temporary food permit, which is a food truck that will be at our summer solstice, and it's permit number 2224. There was a $25 fee that was paid, and this is for Moe's Sweet Eats. I'll make a motion to approve permit number 2224, Moe's Sweet Eats. Second. Moe's Sweet Eats, permit number 2224, $25 fee paid. Motion made by member Ed Bond, seconded for the record by member Tina Santos. Any questions? Temporary food permit. Hearing none, member Lionel Cloutier. Aye. Ed Bond. Aye. Tina Santos. Aye. And chair votes aye. Four yes. Next temporary food permit, uh, 2225. And this is uh, for Uncle Joey's cannolis. And the fee for the permit of $25 has been paid. Oops, sorry. I'll make a motion to approve Uncle Joey's permit 2225, Uncle Joey's cannolis permit. Any second? No notes, all good. That's another Jimmy one out of town? Yes, correct. All right. Motion was made by member Ed Bond, seconded by member Tina Santos. Permit number 2225, $25 fee paid. Uncle Joey's cannolis. We had this one last year, didn't we, Jim? Yeah, they, I understand they were a big hit at uh, Fall Fest. Uh, people nice. seem to like them. Yeah, now you mentioned that, refresh it. I do remember hearing that. Yeah, I think I heard, uh, I think Nicole said that in the uh, planning development yep. office. They yep. were a big hit. Excellent. Any questions? Hearing none. Lionel. Aye. Ed. Aye. Tina. Aye. Chair votes aye. Four zero yes. Okay. Next I'm one is permit number 2226. This is also a temporary food permit, and this is for the Winchester Community Park Committee. They are going to be hold, holding an event outside the Clark at YMCA on May 7th. It appears they're going to be selling breakfast items. When is that? This is for May 7th. May 7th. So they are going to have a family appreciation brunch from 10 a.m. until 1 at p.m. at the YMCA by the gym. And they'll have okay. like oatmeal juices, etc. And they have a serve safe certification. Who's that one for, Tina? Winchester Community Park. Thank you. Community. Is that a nonprofit, Jim? And that's Correct. a no fee. But we waive the fee on that one? If the board wishes, yes. Somebody on this like one, to make on this a motion to waive the fee? Board. I'll make a motion to waive the fee. We have a second? I'll second it. Motion has been made by Member Lionel Cloutier, seconded by Member Ed Bond to waive the fee. Would we like to vote on that first before we vote on the permit? Make it that way we no question about it? Either separate or together, they both. What's that? Either, either way would work, separate or together. We'll do it separate first. Let's make a motion to waive the fee first. Let's, uh, we made a motion in second to waive the fee. Let's vote on it first. Lionel? Aye. Ed? Aye. Tina? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion 4-0 to waive the fee for the Winchester Community Park. 4-0 yes to waive fee. We'll make a motion to approve the permit. Second. Motion now has been made to approve the permit. Any discussion? Hearing none, Lionel? Aye. Ed? Aye. Tina? Aye. Chair votes aye. Again, 4-0 yes to approve the permit. Both fee waived and permit approved, 4-0. So last but not least, this is also the same circumstances. This is uh, fee, permit fee, excuse me. I'm sorry, per permit number, it's, I'm tired. Got my caffeine here, sorry. 2227. This is for Heal Winchiden, and they are going to have a. This is a temporary food permit. They're um, going to be setting up at the library on May 13th, excuse me, May 14th from 12 to 4, and this is for the Taste of Winchiden. 
Now, Jim, isn't this another one where they're putting it on for the good of the town? Correct. It's another nonprofit. nonprofit. So this should be another one where we should be looking to waive the fee. Right. Yes. Absolutely. I'll make a motion to waive the fee on permit number 2227. I'll second. So we now have a motion made by member Ed Bond, seconded by Lionel Courier, to waive the fee for the Heal Witchingdon event. Let's take a vote on that first, unless there's any discussion. Hearing none, Lionel? Aye. Ed? Aye. Tina? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Heal Winchingdon's permit fee is now waived. It's the right thing to do. Thank you, everybody. I'll make a motion to approve permit 2227. Any discussion, anybody? Second. Motion made by member Ed Bond, seconded by member Tina Santos for the Heal Winchingdon's event. What was the date on that again, Tina? May, May 14th. Thank Saturday. you. Just wanted to write it down. Thank you. Okay, hearing no discussion, hopefully they'll have a good event. Good weather, it's outdoors, we need good weather, bring it on. No discussion on the event, anybody, anybody? No, hearing none, Lionel. Aye. Ed. Aye. Tina. Aye. Chair votes aye. So that was the end of the food permits. I have a invoice here for reimbursement. It's for James Abear, Mr. Abear, and it's for the MHO a DPH seminar. This also includes mileage. Or I'm sorry, this is for the mileage. And no, I'm sorry, the seminar is for $65 and the miles, miles is 31.4 miles and it's 36.74 with for a total of 101.74. That was a charitable donation, I believe, by James Avery. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding, just kidding. I just wanted to see the reaction on his face. <laughs> I'll make a motion to pay Jim Abier for the MAOA seminar, $65 and $36 for gas for the same. $36.74. For $101.74. Second. second. Who wants credit on the second? I heard a tie. Go ahead, Tina. Okay. Motion second. was made by member Ed Bond, seconded by member Tina Santos to reimburse the health agent for a total of $101.74 for the MHOA DPH seminar. Any discussion? Hearing none, reimburse the gentleman. Lionel. Aye. Ed. Aye. Tina. Aye. And the chair votes aye. That's it for this evening. Can I ask one question? Absolutely. Jim, at that meeting, remember we discussed about someone backing up for you in case you had to leave? Is, is there any backup for you from the uh, organization? Yeah, the MHOA, I believe, uh, has a, a temporary uh, backup that'll come out in cases of emergency. Um, I'm not sure if it's a permanent situation right now or not, but uh, I know that they had one and that that person had left for another community. So I think they have somebody temporary filling it until they get a full-time replacement. I hope you didn't mind me asking. It's oh, no, we no. We talked about it before. No. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, up next on the agenda, we have Earth Day and any new business. And I see we have a couple people who have been patiently waiting in the audience. Um, if it's okay with members of the board, I think we'd like to offer these folks a chance to come up and speak if they would like to first about anything before we go on to Earth Day. Would anybody have anything? They'd please come on up and introduce yourself. Thank you for coming this evening. <laughs> Come on up and say hello. Hello, I'm Jill Sackett. Hi, how are you this evening? evening. Thank you for coming. Good, thank you. Uh, I'm here tonight uh, in the capacity of um, chairing the um, Winchenden Master Plan mm -hmm. um, Implementation Committee. Okay. So we are making the rounds and we are visiting various boards and committees that are meeting. Welcome. And, uh, hello. And um, encouraging you to, if you are not already, um, familiar with the town master plan to take a moment if you can to read the master plan that was approved by the Board of Selectmen and that we are now charged with helping to implement. 
Um, the Master Plan Implementation Committee was formed um, of, and officially kicked off in January of this year. We've been really, really busy. And we're very, very excited um, to tell you that we've put together a, an approach for tackling this massive document, which we are determined will not sit on a shelf collecting dust. <laughs> so um, as far as the Board of Health is concerned, of the 150 plus strategies listed in here, you folks get off relatively easy. You are listed as leads and contributors on two of them, and they do pertain to drinking water in town. Um, but what we're doing here right now is to just come and visit the various boards and committees and tell you that we are going to do a formal presentation to the Board of Selectmen on June 13, Monday. So I have a little reminder flyer I'm gonna hand out to all you. Um, it's a save the date. And we're going around and asking um, boards and committees to try to prepare, if you can, to send one representative, minimum of one representative, to that meeting where we will be unveiling our whole approach for this, how we're going to be tackling the various nine chapters in the master plan, and how all of you are affected by it as either being named as lead or contributors to these strategies, and how we're going to be there to help support you figure out how to tackle these in a, in a reasonable way and look for quick wins, look for ways in which you need support. Um, this is not something that the boards and committees are gonna be expected to do alone. Um, we are here to help figure out how we can uh, get things done with the um, assistance of the public, the citizens, the boards, the committees, the town manager, um, the implementation committee, and so on. So I'm just gonna pass you out one of these for now. Um, there's a cute little QR code on here if anybody uses those where you just you know click the thing and it takes you right to the master plan. But if you prefer, it sits out on the town website mm -hmm. and it's right there under the master plan implementation committee when you go and look at you know where all the boards and committees are. You go there and there's a link right there. You click on it and this document pops right up. And if you haven't had a chance to peruse it, I um, recommend that you do if you can. I've read it. You've all been very busy. Pardon me? I've read it. You've all been very, very busy. <laughs> we have been. Um, we are just, we, we weren't the ones who actually wrote the thing. The master plan committee that was headed by other folks um, worked on it for six years. And then they finally got that done and handed it off to a new group of people um, the Master Plan Implementation Committee to actually make it happen. I'm the common link. I joined the Master Plan Committee toward the end of its work, and then I got really enthused about it and excited, and I wanted to stay on and, and, and see it go into effect, so. Fresh eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so here you go. Just a reminder. I was a member from the beginning. Yep. <laughs> Tired eyes. Yeah. <laughs> We're just passing these around. <coughs> Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Jill. So if I may, um, Jill, will, will you guys be discussing on the 13th in regards to the two um, strategies and, and such that pertains to the Board of Health? You had mentioned that we needed to come up with some kind of solution or... The, um, really, the, the, the um, June 13 meeting is, um, we're part of the BOS agenda, so we don't, aren't going to have a lot of time. It's really just a big unveiling saying, hey folks, here's a snapshot of the work we've done. This is how we're proposing to tackle this document. Um, this is how basically the committees are affected and what's going to be coming for you down the road after June 13. Um, so we won't have the time or we won't be drilling down into the detail saying here specific committee reps This is what you should be looking for. Um, that's going to come later Okay, but you'd um, like some like one rep to attend Yeah, we to, really do because we want the... we want everybody to sit there and hear for the same at the same time How we're going to try to move forward because it's going to require um, a series of meetings I'm getting ahead of myself because all this is supposed to be unveiled on June 13 it will require a series of meetings um, that that will involve um, the committees and the boards that are um, uh, 
so participate does. in each chapter of the master plan. Um, so it's a big document. It's, it's kind of intimidating, but we're looking for quick wins. We're looking at things we can start working on and start showing some success. Some of these things, when you read the document, you realize you're already doing them. We're already doing them. We just aren't taking credit for it or people don't know. Um, so there's some of that that will be going on. Um, and then some of this stuff is pretty ambitious too. So it needs, you know, people need to kind of sit back and go, how can we really make that happen? Um, so regarding the drinking water, we're not delving quite yet into everything from geese to leaky pipes. Not on June 13th okay. by any means, but okay. um, I, I take a look at that. And as you go through, you may find other things in the document that go, you know what? I think the Board of Health could help here. Even though you're not named, you know, as a, as a leader contributor, there's some stuff about, you know, um, healthy eating and, and, and um, you know, getting fresh produce brought into town and some other things that may or may not um, be of interest to you. But there, when the committee wrote the master plan, there were two that they for sure thought you folks should have a role in, and that was related to drinking water. So if you want to just take a look at those for sure and um, see that those are coming down the pike for you. Sure. Excellent. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad okay. to see that you folks are so multifaceted. It's awesome to see the participation. Thank you for your time. Thank you for we'll coming. See you one of you on June 13th, hopefully. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Sackett. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Lucier, how are you this evening? I'm fine and dandy. Why, could you please come up so we can hear you? We can hear you, but folks on TV may not be able to. May not want to. No. <laughs> I was just going to say that, but. No. This is, for anybody who doesn't know him, this is Mr. Lucier from Maple Street, who's been helping us collect donations for Earth Day. The only thing I wanted to mention is maybe this year they could get the dumps to put in there the right way instead of. Uh, the way they put it in last year, it's supposed to be elongated in that area, so it's easier for us to offload and get into the damn thing. We could we could ask the DPW superintendent. We yeah. could put in a request. That's all I have. Everything else is going forward. The weather's supposed to be okay. All we need is participants. So who do you, um, if you don't mind me asking, who was gracious enough to donate so far? Oh, well, we've already, I've already got the uh, donation from Bell Tate's, um, picking up the one from uh, McDonald's probably tomorrow. Okay. Uh, we've got the vouchers from Lickety Split. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Cumberland's has already graciously uh, said that they would take care of theirs in their own way. Um, okay. Then all we have left is Gourmet Donuts and... Um, uh, Gabby's, which Gabby's been approved already. Okay, I, I, I want everybody to know that um, you've been up there testing the pizza. Yeah, I, I had actually I had I had actually spoke <laughs> with Gabby from Lickety Splits, and she said to me, Keith, I don't know why nobody's claimed any vouchers yet. And I said, Well, there's a really good reason for that. We haven't had Earth Day yet. Yeah. And she went, Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> She thought nobody was claiming them. I said, claiming them will not be an issue. Trust me, the good weather's coming. <laughs> Probably after it's over, they may see an influx. In, uh... so, but um, thank you for all your work on behalf of the Board of Health for collecting those donations. Thank no you. problem. Appreciate it very much. Appreciate it. And we definitely, uh, we want to, this year we'll get some thank you letters typed up that I would like to have all the members of the Board of Health sign so we can get thank you letters out to these businesses. Just, just the members can sign and we can get sent to them making sure that their donations are not, you know, without thanks. You know, during COVID, we had multiple complications and we had businesses that weren't thanked probably as much as we would have liked them to, to have been thanked. You know, and I want to I want to make sure we also know that people know that Bell Tates has been there every year with gloves and rubbish bags which by far are the most important part because you've got to have something to put the rubbish in. Yeah. You've got to have something to keep the germs and stuff and whatnot off your hands to get people to help. So Bell Tates by far is a really key point. Of this. So a shout out to Bell Tates for what they do every year, just in case anybody's watching who knows anybody from there. 
I don't know if uh, Jim wants them to separate. Remember, your son was collecting all the nip bottles for Anthony's and Gardner. Oh yeah, I don't know who was doing that. Somebody was was looking for that, but uh, as long as they get cleaned up, I'm happy. No. Tina's had great experience with nip bottles this year. Yes, yes, <laughs> bags of them on flank. They're Street easy to find. They're everywhere. Then, right. <laughs> Tina, Sharon, Glenn, great experience with nip bottles this year. They're, they are. They are Franklin all over Street. The place, unfortunately. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you. I yep. uh, appreciate the update, and thank you for all your work on collecting those donations. Thank you. Much appreciated, Rick. Yeah, in, instead of a picnic table, which is a little difficult to get out of Angleside at the present time, I have a uh, large table with fold-out legs that I can just bring down that you guys can use. Or... Okay, awesome. That'll be easier on the back. What's a little that? bit lighter. That'll be easier on our backs. Yeah, my back too, getting it in the truck. <laughs> anybody who frequents the Lake Denison State Park, they're doing that there now too. They're going from the traditional wooden ones. If you look at the picnic area alongside the beach, they're now going to the tubular metal legs yeah. with the poly, poly tops and bench seats because they're so much lighter. And foldable. Uh, I, I'm thinking that they're getting sick and tired of the work comp claims, possibly. Can't say I blame them. I hope they're chaining them down. Uh, that's what I said to Jennifer. <laughs> I told Jennifer that I, I hope they realize they need to protect themselves against the five-finger discount store. The lighter they are, the easier they are to take. <laughs> don't give them any ideas, Lionel, okay? <laughs> I don't have to. They probably already got them out registered. <laughs> I also am going to bring a like a folding uh, table because I have some donations that were donated by Bob Goinier. Yeah, I those uh, grabbers. Yes, they're um, it's a box of gloves, grabbers, the the pickers, and then the um, the Edward Scissorhands attachments we like to call them. <laughs> so the only thing we'll have to come to the town hall for is folding chairs, <laughs> to, if they have any. Why? So, you can, since take, we so don't, you can take a nap? Since we don't have a picnic. <laughs> no, I can do that in my truck. It's yeah, air conditioned. He <laughs> reclines a seat. Everybody bring a, a, a bag chair and we're good to go, right? <laughs> yeah, I got a lounge chair at home, a rocking chair. I'll bring it in. <laughs> well, thank you, Rick. Appreciate yep. it. We'll see you on thank Saturday. You, so getting to that, let's remind anybody in the public, one last shout out, Earth Day, this Saturday, coming Saturday, May 7th, Jimmy? Yes. 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Although I'm sure a few of us will be around a little after two if needed. I know I always am, and I'm sure a few others will be in their good graces. They always are. Um, is it a 40 or a 50 yard? We got usually a 40, 50. I know it's at least a 40 open top roll off. Yeah, with the opening at the end. The doors, just walk barn right doors. Yeah. yeah, not the other way like it was last year. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Toward the parking lot. <laughs> if we could talk to Brian, have it yeah. with the doors maybe aiming towards the library possibly so people could back their trucks up to it. We had a lot of folks last year that said that they, it would be easier if they could back their vehicles up to it and just pull right out. Just offload right there. To the back of the vehicle, so if we could possibly ask them. Parking, obviously it was done with parking being an issue. Mm -hmm. That was a previous year under a previous contractor through the DPW, a transfer station. This year we have a different company, so maybe we can get this new company to work with us a little better, hopefully, if, if you could just have that conversation. Absolutely. Tell them, and just tell them, you know, the board, we, we appreciate any help we can get. You know, Absolutely. Be, we'd love it. Yeah, if you move three parking spots, you can back your truck in and put it right up into it. Yeah. Maybe they can put out, um, we can ask Brian to put some cones. safety cones out just to kind of keep those spaces free so when we do get the, the dumpsters delivered, it will be, mm. you know, they'll be able they'll to kind of back it up. Yep. In, in that spot. Normally I've gone over, excuse me, normally I've gone over to the police station and mentioned it and they bring cones over there. So it's marked up that evening. Okay, great. Yeah. It helps. So, anything else about Earth Day we want to cover? Um, I made a poster. Let's see it. I was being crafty. <laughs> just states the day and the time and then just it also mentions um, 
important note uh, to be safe if they come across any needles. Aim it up, aim it up at the camera so they can see it at home, Tina. <laughs> Wherever there. <laughs> uh, so if, if anybody comes across any needles, please do not touch them. Please report it to the Winchester Police. Excellent. And, um, or a Board of Health member that day, so. Ab absolutely, let's emphasize what Ms. Santos just said. Last year we had people touching needles. Um, last year, please do not, we emphasize, do not pick up any sharps or needles of any kind. Please call the WPD at 297-1212, dial zero for dispatch and they will be more than happy to send an officer to pick up any sharps. They will dispose of them properly in the proper emergency dis disposal bins they have. Do not take a chance at becoming infected. Your good deeds and will to help pick up are greatly appreciated, but it's not worth possibly infecting yourself. Also this year, as Ed Bond just pointed out, very what, rightfully so, ticks. If you are picking rubbish up, beware it is tick season. Consider taping off the bottom of your slacks, pants, jeans. If you have boots, maybe tuck your pants inside your boots and tape them off with a little bit of duct tape, wouldn't hurt. Any kind of tape is not gonna hurt, duct tape would be better. Remember to beware of ticks, bug spray. Spray with DEET on your boots, sneakers, shoes, also bottom of your pants, bug spray and tape. Make sure to check for ticks when you are done. It can never hurt to be safe. You don't want to take a chance with Lyme disease. You don't want to be the one person who gets, even though you can get it in your own backyard, you certainly don't want to be the one person that gets it because you were kind enough and courteous enough to help out with your town. So please be conscious of just looking out for Lyme disease, bug spray and tape. Make sure you watch out for ticks. And when you're done, please check for ticks. Again, don't touch any sharps. Call the police department if you find any on Earth Day. And please beware of ticks. I also wanted just to make a note quickly. Um, the, we had a donation uh, from Bob as well. Um, mm -hmm. Of He works for the Abishan. So he, gave, uh, with along the, the gloves and trash bags and grabbers, he also gave a few um, safety vests. So for those that may be in an area that is, um, you know, high on a high traffic area and such, um, we were able to, to let them borrow those so we can uh, they make sure if they're, they're nice. being safe as well, so. Nice, so whoever borrows them, we'll just remind them, make sure they return them. Right, <laughs> So right. we can get them back. <laughs> the grabbers, I was gonna take a sharper, Sharpie and kind of just put BOH on them so that way, um, mm -hmm. You know, if they were to, to grab them, to use them, if they could kind of bring them back and we could sure. store them here at the, the town hall, perhaps. Ed, you had something? Future. What? I was going to say, with that being said, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. No, we have one important <laughs> thing we have to discuss. Okay. Okay, so under new business, we have a property in town we need to address as a board. 33 more Sav. Uh, the town manager approved a permit a board of selectmen actually approved a permit at Gar Park in June for a wonderful Battle of the Bands backslash food truck event. There's going to be a lot of people there. In the corner of Gar Park at 33 Morse Ave, there was an old historic building, not historic, but old, older, large building. It was taken at tax title a couple years ago, back when Keith Hickey was town manager. Uh, the building was known to need a lot of work, and it's something that's going to take quite a while to rebuild. It's no secret. It was a large omen of a project to take on. God bless anybody willing to take it on. At least somebody was willing to take it on. We'll give them that. Um, unfortunately, on the property for about a year and a half now, we have been slowly documenting any progress or lack thereof on the grounds. I want to emphasize this um, issue I'm bringing up is for the grounds of the building and not the interior exterior of the building, but the grounds. The grounds of the building have several bags of open rubbish strewn across the grounds that animals have been in. There are tires, tires on rims, there are furniture, 
some old RV parts from when a large motorhome used to be parked there. There's actually a, what appears to be a top of a unit of an RV within the first three feet of the road and miscellaneous other items all around both sides of the building on the ground. Uh, the town manager, I had spoken with the town manager. The town manager actually met with me two weeks ago as chair of the Board of Health. I invited the town manager to please come look on behalf of the Board of Health as the Board of Health is, needs to address this. I asked the town manager, I invited him to come look. The town manager came and looked and the first reaction our good town manager had was, I saw this last fall and I didn't see anywhere near as much stuff because all the vegetation was growing in. You couldn't see all the stuff in the ground because it's a jungle. When that grows in, if you, anybody who attends the summer concerts, it's a jungle. You can't see it once it's grown in. After you have the winter killing frost and all the foliage, you can then see how much actually is on the ground, which came with, and, and actually in defense of the owner of property, it came with the property when he bought it, what's out there. It was a mess. Um, but now that the critters have gotten into bags of rubbish and strewn it everywhere, on, which it falls under sanitary code, along with tires and furniture and everything else. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. There's broken bottles everywhere. There's food containers, all kinds of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that falls under sanitary code, to put it nicely. That being said, uh, the town manager would definitely like to see this property cleaned up, preferably before the June event with Battle of the Bands and the Food Truck Festival, uh, the town manager saw it and his three words were, oh my God. <laughs> um, he thanked me as chair of the Board of Health for inviting him to come look at it. The town manager actually is trying to work with the Board of Health. He went to the gentleman's residence today and did leave a calling card to try to speak with the property owner. He wasn't able to reach him. Obviously, people work and whatnot. You know, everybody has their life schedules, which is totally understandable. Um, we do need, as a board of health, to have the property tastefully, politely addressed. We, as a board, it's in the town's best interest as the property has been this way for a year and a half now, not cleaned up. We need, as a board of health, to act as a board tastefully, politely, and pretty much authorize the health agent to instruct the property manor to, manager to please clean up the property only. This again is not for the house. The house is legally locked up. This is for the grounds. By Massachusetts general law, the health agent can instruct the owner to clean up the property. By law, we cannot tell the owner how he must clean up the property. We can only tell him he has to clean the property up. <coughs> the law is very strict in what our ground rules are, but we can tell him they must clean up the property. So I wanted to bring this to the board's attention tonight so that we can take the first steps to act so that we can authorize a health agent to address the issue with 33 more SAV. I make a motion that we uh, talk to the agent and have him send him a letter or notify him in whatever way possible to clean it up and give him a certain limit of time to clean it up. Well said. Second. Okay. And I would say before the Battle of the Bands, at least a week before, if possible. And it was my understanding, per the BOS permit of the event, when speaking with a uh, person from Parks and Recreation, that corner of the park is actually where they're planning on putting all the porta potties. So there's going to be a lot of people actually walking to that corner of the park. Because mm -hmm. with that many food trucks there and beverages being sold, and by the way, Bull Spit Brewery is going to be there. It's summer, June, close enough. Uh, forgive me, what's the calendar date summer starts? But it's going to be warm, right? People are going to be buying adult beverages with Bull Spit Brewery there. People are going to need to go to the bathroom. They're going to have the porta potties there. When you have a lot of food trucks and you have people coming to the concert, it's going to probably be good turnout. So I think it's with the amount of porta potties they're going to need. It's going to be a lot of people going to that corner of the park. It's probably in the town's best interest to finally get this property cleaned up with the amount of people that'll be in that corner of the road. So okay. it's, it's it's been a year and a half, and you know I, I want to make sure we approach this tastefully and have it a note of public record. We're we're not throwing the property owner of 33 Morse Ave under the bus. That property is a huge undertaking. It's a ton of work. The guy actually just put new new windows in the building recently. 
There's new doors on it that because we had people going in and out of it last year. We did get them to put new doors on it so people couldn't go in and out anymore when I addressed that. There's new windows on the building, so the building is locked up, thankfully. Now it's a matter of we just need to get the yard cleaned up and he can fix a building that's locked up at his own behest, but we do need to get the property cleaned up. There is a lot of sanitary code issues there, and we're just looking for help on this, that's all. I haven't been by there, but is there still like a heap of kind of like drywall kind of other areas? Three, Three. of them. Three there, are, there are several. And I don't know how, you know, if there's any asbestos or any kind of There may be, there may not. I don't there, know. But that's kind there of are no, into There are no soil. trespassing signs. So like any pictures that I took for the town, I had to take from the road because there are no trespassing signs. So even as chair of the Board of Health, I cannot enter the property. So even the town manager observed everything from the road, just so you know, for all points of lawful purpose. We took pictures from the roadside. We did not enter into the property. There's a motion a second on the floor right now. No, no, I'm just making sure everybody knows so we're lawfully covered. <laughs> So who said, Ilano made the motion, who seconded it? Was that you, Tina? Tina, yeah. Okay, so we have a motion made by Ilano Cloutier and seconded by member Tina Santos to authorize a health agent to instruct the owner of 33 Morse Ave to clean up the property. So with that, do we have any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, member Ilano Cloutier. Aye. Ed Bond. Aye. Tina Santos. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The town manager will be happy to hear it and I'm sure so will Parks and Recreation. <laughs> While we're on that note, I guess, could I just ask? Um, yeah, what's up? At one of our meetings, yep. maybe two meetings ago. Go for it. They, we, we had um, talked about, or we had the gentleman from Camelot come in. From um, where? Camelot. Camelot. And we were Camelot. I'm, Camelot I'm drawing a blank. Camelot the Old Center. The veterans yeah. Oh, oh Old Center, Old Center. Yes, for yes, the yes. Three yes. yes. They're actually um, on my list to go back to this month. Okay, Check yeah, on. I know we, I was we had asked for updates, so I was just yeah. checking to see if we had any. The veteran's place. See, if you said veteran's I place in Old Center, I would have been on the same page. <laughs> I couldn't remember the camel Yeah, they're, they're on the list to, to double check back on this. Thing. <laughs> okay, I know they were going to look, they were going to be updating you in regards to like a contractor and, <laughs> and so forth. Have you heard anything? I have not since that meeting, but. Okay. Yes, That's because it deal. actually was a board stipulation that they keep you in the loop and yep. update you. That was a stipulation. I, I think just after that, they called and, and run down that they had, you know, mm -hmm. the contractors all lined up. So okay. that's the reason they're on, on the list for. Sure. Great. Excellent. Okay, great. Anything else? Anything else? Do we I've have got motion? something that I want to bring up that's past tense, way past tense. Way past tense. Franklin Street. Okay. Okay. Now, we did a inspection up on Franklin Street that showed the place was contaminated. We had the DEP go in there, and they even said it was contaminated to a certain point. Now, we were talking today with the town manager about the property, and we can't touch it because it is not under the jurisdiction of the town of Winchenden. It has not been taken for tax title. But what can we do with the Board of Health to get the DEP to go out there and do something about cleaning it up? Or we're gonna be stuck with it. And just like we were Alaskan Freezer and the rest of those. And I don't think the taxpayers can afford to keep shelling out 60 grand here or 80 grand there to fix a problem that should have never been left in the first place. That's my feeling. My uh, friend Anana Arthen <coughs> looked up the gentleman that <coughs> supposedly owned the property until he saw paying taxes on it. Apparently he is deceased from what she found. No, I think that's Jerry, that's senior. That's what I'm referring to, senior. Oh, it is senior. But okay. we don't know who it may have fallen to. And during COVID, public records are a you-know-what storm. Yeah. Okay. From this what I understand, he's in Unity, New Hampshire. From the younger? Perhaps. We don't even, and, and that's probably like Actually, we don't even know who owns it. Right. We have no way of knowing who owns it. No, Jer is it Jerry Bader? 
Beach Gary, Mall. I think. Or Gary, yeah. It's, so it's you have on no way of knowing who legally owns it. Excuse me, it is on record. We have a file downstairs. Yeah, but we don't know the town. I checked with the tax assessor's office. They have taxes owned for 2021, 2022. Right. But there is an in, there is an incomplete report that the town owns it, and the town doesn't own it. No, it doesn't. Any reports that the town owns it are mis misconstrued and are legally incorrect. The town never took it. So when the town doesn't own it, there's literally a trespassing issue, what can you do issue, is the town even interested in taking it, you have a good point, Lionel, and how do you keep people off it if it's contaminated? The next question is, what is it even contaminated with? There's a million different contaminants, you know, I mean. Well, I can name a few for you, gasoline, antifreeze, and uh, ray, uh, come from air conditioners, Freon, that was poured into a hole in the ground. All right, but gasoline and antifreeze you can also find in pretty much anybody's garage, too. Right. So, you know, I'm not undermining it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm right. not undermining anything. I'm just saying it's... And then you, have, then you have a pile of wood that's all chipped up that came from old furniture, which contains lacquer and varnish. And, and, you that was based pile, and you have 20 huge piles of clothes that could right. be full of God knows how and many that, mice. And that was, based, <laughs> that was based with lead well, to make it to stick the, to the furniture. Yeah. According to the town manager, because I've met with him on it, and um, the, the town has no interest of taking on the property. We have many projects mm -hmm. already that, have, that are slightly... Contaminated, etc. This particular property does not have, you know, I, I guess Beach Street. There's the, the, the opportunity for a park, etc. There's other locations that have opportunities for it. This location does not. It's strictly contaminated and a, you know, a, a dumping guess, a, ground, a dumping Lit, ground, a money pit. Lost. Um, so. You know, perhaps the suggestion, I guess, is to speak to the adjacent neighbor um, business. Um, there is people going over there. We had talked about um, at our last meeting illegally dumping. The, the fence is, you know, dilapidated, falling down. Um, you know, perhaps we can speak to, is it Lionel Higgins next door? Higgins Electrical. Yeah, Mr. Higgins, they yeah. Can, you know, point a, a camera there to, to see. Um, if there's anybody kind of dumping, yeah. um, you know, to, to get that on record yeah. and be able to, to take ownership of that. Um, otherwise, we, we really don't have any kind of, we're not it against really could private fall property. Under. It takes a village. It could very well fall under. It takes a village on this one, you know, because well, there's so many legal things that are in our way, obstacles. It could be it takes a village of a bunch of different people in our town to help out, maybe to try to help out in combined sources. Like you're saying, a camera. Could the town possibly help repair a fence within so many feet of town property since the town owns four feet in? There's multiple avenues, you know, to block it off. Who, could we talk to the Board of Selectmen about, could the Board of Selectmen authorize the town to open a conversation with DEP? There's another avenue. Selectman could open up a conversation with DEP. Right. There's many avenues on this. I think if, if it's monitored, perhaps to speaking to either the Board of Selectmen or the town, to see, maybe DPW to see if they could put up signs stating that it's under, be, you know, under video surveillance or something. Under like video that. surveillance and, no and or loitering and mm -hmm. fines for illegal dumping. Yep. Because, you know, there are many. Because what it's probably going to cost to clean that property up is probably more than what it's worth in terms of the taxes owed on it, too. And that's what really stinks. Yeah. You know, is, is it equitable for the town? And the answer is no. So, I mean, I think this is going to be a multi-tiered effort on this Franklin Street property. I really do where it's going to take a village to, of resources to help, help our community on this one. So I think we should possibly consider entertaining a conversation with the Board of Selectmen about is there anything we can get the DPW to possibly help with, like we're talking about, along with maybe asking the BOS if there's something they can do to start have the town start a conversation with the DEP regarding it. What are, what are our town's legal rights with a contaminated property? 
because otherwise it's going to sit there for 20 years like Alaska freezer. Well, we don't need that. Well, not only that, it's going to sit there like Webster Street sat for 26 years. And DEP still hasn't done a damn thing about it. Pardon my French. I know I live across from it. Mm -hmm. There's, yeah, frankly, there's too many. <coughs> I shouldn't say too many, but there are, there are a few that problem areas that, that we need to. Well, kind of we had previous town leadership, and I don't need to go any further for a decade and a half that didn't care, and I'll leave you know where that. that went. All right, with that, anything else? Motion to close the meeting. I make a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second it. Motion was made to adjourn and with a second made by Lionel Cludy or second by Member Aid Bond. Anybody else? Any discussion? Hearing none. Lionel? Aye. Eddie? Aye. Tina? Aye. And the chair votes aye. The meeting is adjourned at 7.04 p.m.